Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hello, Internet. Uh, today is October 14th, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute. Episode number 48. Is it 48, guys? Nice. And this is where we talk everything movies from the week before, current, and still yet to come. On today's show, we might talk about what could have been Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, one that we would have liked to watch. A new screenwriter on Star Trek. Uh, Gotham finally gets, uh, or not finally, but gets approved for a full season. And much, much more. The trailer for this week. Oh, well, before I go into the trailer, let's discuss our awesome co-host, Sorg. Yes, I'm here. We're here in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm at Sorgatron on the tweeters. I need to adjust my camera. Hey, hi, guys. Hey, there there you we are. go. Um, and I know you like to get geeky, uh, Mike, so I want to point out my very, uh, uh, for the ladies, Wonder Woman today for the coffee cup. Oh, yeah. We have uh, in New York, our New York connection, Mad Mike. I, I. Hello, hello, Internet. Hi. Um, I apologize for how my voice sounds and how I may look. Um, I am suffering from the New York Comic Con virus. <laughs> uh, it is not Ebola, as some people have um, predicted I might have after Comic Con. Uh, I will do my best to tell you all the awesome things I saw this week. Did you I dress up for Comic Con? Did you cosplay? Uh, I cosplayed as Mad Mike, which oh. is a very easy costume. Nice. I like that. It yeah. comes with a mask and everything. Yes, it does. <laughs> uh, so the trailer was not really a trailer. It was a teaser for this week. Uh, a teaser for the animated version of Popeye. And uh, I was kind of disappointed. You mean the, the reanimated version of Popeye yes, in the long the, run? The because it animation. kind of was a 3D thing before, I yeah, guess. Kind of ish. Yeah, so I was kind of disappointed <laughs> in this teaser because they they never implied spinach. It's an animation test. They haven't gone that far. But, uh, but isn't that what we want to see? The them squeezing the can, chunking out some green stuff into his mouth. <laughs> okay. Was that was that character that just like magically appears and disappears? Was that ever? The the a floaty thing? the floaty furry character yeah. I think um I think <laughs> I don't remember him like disappearing I, I, and reappearing I feel like there was a period of like comics or something where they had some kind of really peculiar characters um but I, I don't know I don't know yeah I don't know. what is anyone excited to see this I think it's cool that it's coming out for you know another generation um experience like my, my Popeye experience I remember watching the Robin Williams film really young some of the early cartoons were being rerun on like TBS or something mm -hmm. and um and and very specifically the uh Popeye and Sun Saturday morning cartoon like so uh, you know again it's being and that was that was that generation you know my generation being reintroduced to Popeye was that Popeye and Sun right of course how many aunt sons were there in that in that era right yeah um, there was so, a captain caveman in some sort exactly I mean. Flintstone kids that kind of stuff um so why not reboot the character for this I mean I mean we you know we we're just talking you know speaking of comic-con you know we, we saw Voltron getting rebooted for a new generation you know they're, they're not gonna everybody wants to be the next Ninja Turtles that can come back and still float and um, this is whoever owns Popeye doing the same thing. That's very possible. So, yes, I'll agree. I still don't know. My personal opinion, I'm kind of like, whatever. Okay. But we're just a bunch of guys, right? Talking about this I, stuff. I don't know if Popeye really works for this generation. Okay. I yeah, I don't know. Because at the end of the day, it's 
two muscle-bound brutes fighting over a woman who seems very, very <laughs> subservient. I don't know if that's going to fly. The first joke in this. The first joke in this is, is it's raining men. That's Hallelujah! True. Yeah, uh, they, they put some other word in there, I believe. Like I, I think the 2014 version of Popeye ends with Olive Oil saying, "Screw both of you guys! I'm going to Wimpy's. He owns his own business." That's why we need, like, like there, we yeah. need the, the more, the more, <laughs> the for, more feminist uh, olive oil to be inserted in here. That that that's your twist for the new generation. I even thought she was more feminist, like, in the cartoon. Like, I didn't think she was so, like... I think when they had the cartoon, there wasn't feminism. Well, yeah. there was, but not, yeah. not as prevalent as it is. No, now. no, of course not. Of course not. But uh, Before we jump on to Comic-Con, the, uh, the lineup for or this weekend's box office went as so. Gone Girl 26, which, eh, uh, Dracula Untold... Got like twenty three, so it came in number two. Alexander or Alexander the Terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day, which I actually hear is actually pretty good. Came in third with about eighteen million. And the Judge, which is uh, Iron Man playing mm-hmm. a civilian, came in fifth. So <laughs> I guess nobody really cared to with see thirteen million. Uh, see so so we want to see Iron Man in the Iron Man suit. We don't want uh, Tony Stark doing other things. Yeah. Yeah. That is not true. Okay. I, I very much would like to see the judge. I was just busy. I think I'd, I think I'd like to see the judge, just not in theaters. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would have been a good segue to another one of our stories. But before we get there, Mad Mike was in New York, and uh, he was at Comic-Con. Yes, I was. And, oh, man, did I see some stuff. Yeah, boobies. I mean, this is PG, so... Well, uh, no, no. Well, yes, but no. Um, no, you have to be... All right, this, this is just a disclaimer uh, before I get into the stuff that I saw. If you're a Comic-Con, you have to be careful of cosplaying because you never know how old that person is when they're in costume. Oh, that's true. And yes, you have to be really, really careful of that. But anyway, um, I got to see footage from Daredevil. Oh, nice. Yes. Uh, I went to the Daredevil panel. They had a whole big Q&A there for everyone. Uh, it was a lot of fun. They revealed who Rosario Dawson will be playing, which is the character called Night Nurse. Hmm. And um, I was not aware of who this character was, but my friend informed me that Night Nurse is actually the girlfriend of one Dr. Stephen Strange. So if that... If, because this is all in continuity, it's all connected, and they even teased that there'd be some S.H.I.E.L.D. involvement, perhaps. Uh, Rosario Dawson could be in the Doctor Strange movie with a yet-to-be-cast Doctor Strange. Hmm. Hmm. But the footage uh, looked really interesting. Uh, they definitely aren't shying away from blood. Uh, it was a, What we saw was basically just a big-ass fight scene. But it was really good choreography. It looked a lot like uh, the fight scenes you'd see on Arrow. So I'm really excited for that. But uh, yeah, it lo- they only showed like about a five minute teaser. But it was really, really fun to watch, and everyone seemed really enthused about it. And uh, let's see, what else did I see at Comic Con? Oh yeah, I saw tonight's Agents of Shield episode. Which is a very good episode. I'm not going to spoil anything of it, obviously, right now. But uh, if you watch Ains of Shield, uh, you will be very intrigued by where tonight's episode is going. And right after Agents of Shield, um, Clark Gregg insisted that they show us a little bit more stuff, a little bit more, and they showed us a scene from Agent Carter that was filmed the Monday before. Hmm. So we got to see a little scene of Agent Carter talking to Howard Stark. And we got to see the human form of Jarvis, which was very interesting. Huh. The actual butler that Howard Stark had that Tony named his AI after. That's interesting. Um, Yeah. I'm reading down the rundown of some of the other uh, notable things. Looks like I didn't know that uh, the Nickelodeon uh, Airbender... Legend of Kura, uh, Kura, 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 
Four. I didn't know that was ending. Oh yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'm not uh, a fan of that. I haven't seen it, but I heard that panel was huge and it was very heartfelt. And they said goodbye and thank you to the fans. Uh, one Nickelodeon panel I did see was Ninja Turtles, mm-hmm. and th- and this will actually segue into one of the stories you have because uh, they spoiled for us coming up this season on Ninja Turtles is going to be Bebop and Rocksteady. Nice. Finally. And they showed us they showed us the creation. Sorg Malenko, I clapped for ten straight minutes. <laughs> I think I annoyed the people around me, but I didn't care because they looked really good. And uh, I will post a picture I took of the character designs for Bebop and Rocksteady on the Rambling Movie Minute page. If you are curious, please, nice, please do. This was uh, this is for the this is for movie number two, or is this for the show? Oh no, this is for the show. The show. All right. Yes. So even the fact that they're implying these characters in the show could mean i mean the the story if we if we want to segue um the story was basically showing the concept art from the movie that uh of some of the characters that weren't used and bebop and rocksteady were one of those characters and i i personally if these characters or at least from this concept art if these were in the movie i kind of feel like i might have liked it a little bit better I might have been more intrigued. Really, least. really, that's the thing that would make you like the movie. The, in the concept long run? art for these characters made it would have made the turtles seem almost like they belonged if I had seen these like characters alongside. Okay. I thought the contrast, like it, it kind of like would have bridged the gap. I think between like the already far fetched, like okay, we have these these huge turtles that are supposed to be more realistic. I think these characters what it might have bridged that realism to okay this is more of a like this is early this is I mean look there's a there's a thing of shredder is this shredder I'm seeing that's like a a, a more gun toting uh, version of shredder and he looks like Bane yeah, yeah a little bit like this is early this is early 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 <laughs> but um yeah, like, definitely. they were, at least, the they were at least thinking about it but the, the really cool i love the concepts i think i would love that they popped up everything's all cg there's no reason for them not to bring these characters in in, in some fashion oh yeah there's i mean there's already uh, you know there's, it's already implied in the article that there's a possibility that these characters might show up at some point mm-hmm. in the in the future versions of this movie but yeah uh, let's see. Moving along, um, <laughs> keeping on Tony Stark and playing in other roles. It looks like uh, in Captain America three, he's signed on to that cast list. And uh, reading that article, it seemed like it did have a lot to do with the um, the crossover going into that. Uh, I know we talked about this before, but like that alternate, not alternate universe, but uh, the war. I guess civil war. Yeah. Which I am intrigued. I've, I got a little bit into the comic book about the whole civil war, but like, I'm kind of intrigued about this just because, well, I don't know. I guess I'm on the fence. Part of me likes this idea because it opens up the universe to a lot more stuff. The other part of me says, okay, will be very old by the time all of these characters are really like drawn out and this is just the, another way for them to milk us for money well i the thing about the civil like i've read the civil war arc and i like it a whole lot mm-hmm. but um the problem with civil war is and more specifically civil war is set in the marvel universe for those who don't know it's a storyline about a superhero registration act basically superheroes working for the government and having actual responsibilities and like being able to be deployed elsewhere uh, the only like one of the big issues with it is a lot of it hinges around spider-man which as you know is not part of the marvel cinematic universe yes um another big part is that the one of the big things about the superhuman registration act that's the center of the whole civil war storyline is finding out the secret identities of the superheroes now in the marvel cinematic universe the only one whose civilian identity isn't really known is i guess hulk 
hmm. I guess the Hulk. But I mean, even he's been on wanted posters. Like Bruce Banner's been on wanted posters because people know who the Hulk is. I, you know, I think it's one of those things where you're going to see um, a little bit of the the, the universe is going to expand before they get to this point, right? Um, I, I think that's what you're going to see. You're going to see just more characters pop up. Um, it's going to be adaptive, even if they don't get Spider Man. So, Spider Man was a big factor of what Civil War was. But they can do it without them, just like they've done other storylines without them. How are they doing Age of Ultron? Have you read that? You know, Wolverine's not around, for instance. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, everything's going to be adapted for this. They're going to take the the pure principle. Uh, I just rewatched uh, uh, Days of Future Past today. Purely <laughs> different. I mean, just, yeah. just purely, purely different. Then if you went back and read the original storyline, it's going to be adapted saying, well, how are they going to do it without Spider-Man? They're going to do it without Spider-Man. They're just not going to have Spider-Man or some other character is going to be the Spider-Man of the story. Well, the- I have a feeling that it's going to hinge on Hydra being in depth into shield. That's true. There's a whole other wrinkle with this whole Hydra shield thing, too. So maybe that will be the Civil War. I mean, I guess it does open up the can of worms that with the way Netflix is going and them trying to expand and also their competition with like what Amazon's doing. Like there's a possibility that a lot of these might not be made for the big screen. That's true. I I would imagine that Captain America is going to be the big screen. Well, Captain America is, but but you're you're saying like, like, but but there could be other parts of this. Like we could have another trio of series to happen between like Avengers two and three that, deal with uh i don't know new warriors or young avengers or something like that right is that what you're kind of leaning towards yeah so I'm leaning and, towards. if you do that it's like some kind of big uh superhero team thing that happens on a netflix and uh, uh and that kind of fills a gap and builds like that it's a bigger world which civil war you're right civil war just does kind of need to feel like there's a big marvel world to this well i mean they already are doing that because they're having daredevil come out then they're doing Jessica Jones, and they're doing Iron Fist, and they're doing Power Man, and then they're doing the Defenders. But yeah. like, I don't think those series are going to be done and absorbed in enough time for them to be part of the Civil War. I think that's just going to be not altogether separate, but I don't think you'll be seeing those characters show up in movies. What do you? Uh, what, what is the timeline they're given so much, so far for Civil War? Is it is it uh, for Avengers three or maybe four? I wouldn't be surprised. I think probably around three. Like yeah, I don't three. think they. They think you're doing three. Okay. It would have to be even yeah. after three, really. Well, I guess not. After we haven't three. really. We don't really know what three is going to be yet. Yeah. You know, there's well, there's Captain. rumors, and this is like this is probably early stages of figuring out uh, what Tony Stark and Captain America three is going to be, which is going to lead to this supposed Tony Stark and a new team in, in Avengers three. Well, I yeah. mean, Captain America three is slated for 2016. Okay. And Avengers three isn't slated till two thousand eighteen. So, so I mean, take that what you will, but it's gonna be way before. It's probably gonna be something, something like after Age of Ultron. Okay. Well, all of this talking about the future stuff makes me think: What would they do if they revamped Terminator? Uh, Terminator. Uh, they could use a revamp. Does it really need a revamp? Aren't they they doing it? Aren't they doing that though? Is it isn't isn't Schwarzenegger coming back for a Terminator mostly a reboot? Also, haven't they really rebooted it every time since two? They said that it's supposed to drop possibly, or they plan to release two sequels in 2017 and 2018. And they are trying, they're calling it Terminator Genesis. They are trying to say this is not. This is not a sequel or a reboot. Well, yet, this, yet the original Terminator is going to be in it. Can we just stop with Terminator movies? Yeah. It, you know, it's one of those things. It's just like Highlander kept going. And just like, oh, there's a story. I don't think you put this in here, but but I, I shared around a story about Underworld is going to get some more, more movies and perhaps even a, a series. If there's a world for them to draw from like this, it's a franchise, you know, um, how, how much uh... they... How much do they abuse the heck out of Highlander? We've had Terminator series. We've had Terminator versus Predator comic books. Yeah, Terminator is a franchise. Here's and, the and thing. And it, 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 it's, a, it's a concept that people are going to return to. You know, Kind of like the Popeye coming back for a new generation. This is the Terminator for a new generation. But 
no see okay i as much as i want to blame fox for ruining any kind of tv adaptation of terminator yeah if i recall we had a very good television version of terminator i enjoyed it i enjoyed it and fox said ah you know we're gonna wipe our hands from this yeah now not to say if this had been you know a couple years later that's not a giant failure of the terminator franchise I don't yeah think. but the movie that came after that i don't think was a huge success Mm, I don't know about that. Salvation. I'm pretty sure the giant failure of the Terminator franchise was anything after T2. Yeah. (laughs) So, I mean, Uh, revamping this idea, I don't know. It's, I mean, yes, it's a day old, it's like the day age argument. Box office, 370 million for uh, 200, yeah, $200 million budget, 370 million uh, uh, taken. You know, I mean, that's... Wait, is that domestic or is that I don't know. That's worldwide? Just, that's, a, that's a listing on Wikipedia, so I imagine that's worldwide. I mean... We, we, we can't still keep making Terminator movies until we're actually sit in the year that Terminator is supposed to be set in. <laughs> that You don't see them rebooting Back to the Future because 2015 is almost here. Franchises... Like, I think we're in a world where franchises don't need to make sense to the extent that the Avenger films do. Because, I mean, look at James Bond. Yeah, yeah, but, but James but, Bond is a different animal altogether. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. that's set in our time. Mm-hmm. It's not like revisiting, like, oh, let's, let's and, revisit And on top of past. that, time travel, we can do wherever the heck we want. Look at what X-Men just did. I'm pretty sure James Bond's a time lord anyway. Yeah, yeah. That's why <laughs> that he makes sense. <laughs> kind of makes sense. Yeah, it's like, instead of the code name The Doctor, his code name was James Bond. Bond. And he just decided to stay on James Earth Bond. and work for Unit. Like that's all it is. Come on, people. <laughs> We're through the looking glass here, Sorg. <laughs> uh, hey, um, what else? Oh, hey, so Star Trek three, right? J.J. Abrams will not be attached to that. At first, I was kind of like, "Yeah, what the hell?" He's got Star Wars to do. Yeah. And, I the, thought of that. and the Trekkies yeah. versus Star Wars flame wars start anew. Well, the guy that has been slated, um, I I had his name a second ago, but he's already wor- he worked on the last one, mm-hmm. and so like to be honest, I mean it's sa- it's still the same ecosystem. I don't think much is going to change. I don't think we're going to see a completely different, uh, like yes, J.J. Abrams has a different way of directing a film, you know, but. With the success of one and two, I don't see why you redo, you know, what's working. I I feel like this is just going to be. I don't think anything's going to change. Is it going to be? Is it going to be a redo? I mean, or is, it's no, just, no, this a new, is this is three. There, there's just a, with the different yeah, it's writer. the third one. It's just a new writer and everything. Yeah. I I think I think just uh this is a matter of projects. Uh, I mean, how many writers are involved in the Marvel series? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah Captain yeah, America true. three is the first time I think I heard of a writer returning. Other than John Favreau, I guess as, as a director, um, because it's been kind of all over the place. I think. Well, and Whedon, Whedon's doing Whedon, Whedon, of course, yeah, yeah. But generally, um, like, yeah, I, I, I can see it because I mean, I, I think Abrams doesn't like to say on a project too long. No, that makes sense. Like, I mean, look at the stuff he does. Um, so I, I mean, he's going to produce it or whatever, right? So I mean, I thought that was a big, uh, a nice little, uh, what's a, what's the word I'm looking for? A cloak of of mystery and the fact that even lost right he was really only on the first season <laughs> it was, he, no 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 he did the first like, episode yeah, the first episode he did the first episode and now it's like this is a, oh my yeah. god this is a jj abrams a lost oh my god <laughs> and it's like he did the first episode dude he asked a bunch of questions and left the writers to figure it out yeah you know he, he's the guy that like like comes in gives your your business a whole new strategy and then lets you float okay and it disappears kind of like the people on lost don't yeah. don't get me wrong it, it turned out good you know i mm-hmm. i enjoyed it it was a hell of a ride they had a lot of fun with it and he set some really good starts to that yeah but <laughs> You Can know, we like, just call Star Trek three Star Trek three now with thirty percent less lens flare? Oh, well, hey, hey, you know they did scale back on that last one. I he thought. did. So I want to say you have more random Doctor Who uh, actors popping up, like the rest of <laughs> television these days. I guess that is true. Well, I will say the the good thing too about because I was never a big Star Trekkie. Is that what Trekkie? I was Trekkie. never really 
huge in Malango, the Star Wars. Malango, it's Trekkie uh, or Trekker. Trekker. Yes. Depends. Yes, there's, a, there's no star. Uh, there's no star. Trekkie or Trekker. I was a Star Wars I fan. I think both are acceptable. I'm a fan of both. Well, I'm now a fan of Star Trek. You know, I'm a fan of good TV and movies. Good story. So I like them both. Yes, I will agree with <laughs> that. Can't we just like them both? Like, is, no. Are, is there that few of people that like both of them? You know, I uh, me, I love you uh, much like Mike. I think you, you and I share this love of Marvel that you know. I love the interconnectedness of it. Right. Yes. That's why I love Star Trek because I love the interconnected. Like I'm watching like Enterprise and I'm rewarded because I watched like an episode of Next Generation where they, they talk about a thing that happens later, right? Like this, that part I really dug and the whole kind of science-based ideas, a lot of the concepts were um, early science at the time that we believed were was happening in space. Yeah. Uh, and Star Wars is fantasy. Yeah. It, it's it's it's, it's a fairy not a fairy tale but it, but it's a fantasy adventure in space and it's really good at it. <laughs> Mike, is it? Is yeah. it, but it is though, right? I don't it mean is. that in a demeaning way. I do not mean that in a de- demeaning way whatsoever. No, I, I I think what you're you like logic in your storyline. Like if something happens earlier in a universe, it should still be referenced if it comes up again later in that series is lifetime. I think that's why we like the Marvel cinematic universe because things that happen on agents of shield directly tie into a movie that came out the following weekend. You're you're rewarded for your investment. Yes. If you actually like, I enjoy things. If you pay attention to there's little Easter eggs that are literally just for you. Yeah. Like, like even the Kevin Smith movies do that all the time. Even Tusk did it. Mm -hmm. Like if you're a fan of Smodcast, there's a lot of stuff within Tusk that if you listen to this podcast, you're like, oh, I I see what you did there. This guy doesn't, but I see what you did there, sir, and I approve. I would say uh, a good bridge, and I could be wrong, but this makes sense to me, Battlestar Galactica. That seems like a perfect bridge between Star Wars and Star Trek. Uh, could be. It's, the... it's a possibility of what could happen. It was kind of the lost in space. I mean, lost the show in space. <laughs> I feel like I've done that before. <laughs> uh, no, I was lost in space, like where it's just a random floating island. And they were like, how are we breathing? Screw how that. Did... How did this plane crash here? How do we get off this meteor? <laughs> Why did we kill off the cop from Heroes? Jeez. <laughs> uh, all right, so between these last two stories, I think I think we'll have more discussion talking about Gotham. The other one was talking about the Pixar holiday lineup of movies, and although they look intriguing, I think I just think they're interesting. So, and these are these are like straight to ABC movies. It looks like yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I mean, DreamWorks has already been doing this with their stuff. Yeah. I mean, go on Netflix and find like the Halloween and the Christmas editions of everything from like Shrek, Shrek to How I Train Your Dragon to to uh, whatever that monsters one was that they did. Yeah, um, but I think this one will pull in more pull, and plus they've all been doing the holiday thing anyway. Yeah, but I mean to good. see I, it expands those characters, the characters. Sure, yeah. why not? I mean, but are they actually bringing in like Tom Hanks to do this thing? Oh, I don't know, but I mean it's I possible. It's a Christmas. I be yeah, the holiday release. I think they're slated to start. As Tom Hanks soon is, as Tom Hanks as uh so they got Tom Hanks, Tim Allen coming back, Kristen Skull as Trixie, Kevin McKidd from Grey's Academy as Reptilius Maximus. Uh so Well, I, I mean they do the want to do a, a Toy Story 4, so it's just, you know, keeping this uh, fresh in the mind. Like ooh. like, hey, um, guess uh, what? We we have the toys with a whole nother plus it is little young. We are at the point that it's not a big thing for you to for Tom Hanks to be hired to do a Voice voiceover over. for a TV special, you know. I mean, we're at that point where we're where star movie stars and TV stars are pretty interchangeable these days. So, and plus, Tim Allen already works for ABC. <laughs> yeah, basically, like that's it. Can I make a small rant? Okay, there doesn't need to be a Toy Story four. There doesn't need to be, but there needs <sighs> to be if it's going to make them more money and make more like new kids come to Disney World. But 
it's, it's, see, it's, it's, I hate. That's what I hate. About that's the, but that's what this the, the business. Thing. That's what this is. If if uh, if uh, if Spider Man Malengo, Malengo, if they change Soren to Tony Sark's Soren, you'd be at Epcot tomorrow. Let's be honest. Let's be real honest with ourselves. If they change the Soren ride, which is just like uh, lifting a uh, chair lifting high over a huge widescreen area of California. If they change that into you being in the Iron Man suit and flying over California and seeing Marvel things on the screen, you'd be all for it. Oh yeah, I go I go suit up in a in a in a suit. But I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I, it could be me. If anybody saw Toy Story 3 with the most epic ending to a animated feature freaking ever why would you go and risk all right all right we we got we got some you're you're rousing them in the chat room uh chachi says new beginning for i actually i like that new little girl way more than i ever approved of andy (laughs) (laughs) i don't approve of andy um uh chachi first of all i don't know if this is related but he says gummy worms are incredible uh secondly shut your um mouth toy story 4 (laughs) is necessary malengo why is it necessary we want more more buzz lightyear as long as it's not that crappy buzz lightyear cartoon they had for a while there Um, chachi's so passionate about this he misspelled necessary (laughs) That's that's how much Chachi needs us in his life. Oh man, I I mean, all right, we're at we're at the point where we we're still saying Pixar can do no wrong, right? But they've opened they've opened that door of now we can mess up because we're doing sequels. No, so no 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 yes no, they can only Once... mess up if they keep doing movies about talking cars and planes. Yeah, <laughs> well, that, that wasn't even them. Notice, yeah, notice, they didn't you know, the Disney took over. Disney did that. Disney yeah. did planes, and Disney kind of got the fall in our face. I feel like they throw the Disney name under the bus when they do stuff like that. And and Pixar's like, mm, no, we'll, we'll stick with this with Pixar. We're like, you know, I don't know about the script. Let's have the Disney department do it. What made if, Pixar awesome is original content that nobody had freaking thought of. I okay. Think, I think as this bubble gets bigger... If, but they got it, a franchise, and they're part of the machine that's the now. Problem. Yes, that's the problem. They're part of the machine. Oh well, if you know, Toy they Story just, Four they comes just out, not have been part of the machine, and Toy Story would have like ran at the Cannes Film Festival, and you and I would have maybe watched <laughs> it, and then there would no more Toy Story, and we wouldn't even be having this conversation. Why are we watching movies, anyways? <laughs> yeah, God, they're all just corporate facsimiles. Oh my God, oh. worlds that we want to inhabit. God. Speaking of corporate identities destroying the world that we want to inhabit, Gotham. He's been watching Gotham. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. All right, Malengo, we we started this conversation off air. I love uh, it. I love it too. Yeah. I haven't seen this week's, but I'm I'm digging it. Yeah, I I still don't. Blue Blue Man surprised me last week. I was like, <laughs> wow, that's what? Why is that a is that actually a character? If not, it should be. I mean, holy crap. All right. It's a horrible I way still, to go. <laughs> I still have the same problem with Gotham that I had from the from when I heard the concept of it. Gotham Police Department is almost cartoonish in its corrupt nature. <laughs> no, 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 no. It would only so be bad. more cartoonish if you had a Chief O'Brien in attendance. Sorg, Sorg, they're almost like Batman 66 had a more realistic police department. <laughs> let's let's be fair about this and they had one officer they had <laughs> they one did. officer it was it was chief o'brien wasn't it no it was, uh, maybe i don't know Hold i thought on, they I look up the Mr. batman Gordon. batman's uh 1966 cast here we go, go i ahead. thought they still called him commissioner gordon no no there was commissioner gordon but then there was like the, oh, yes, uh, the irish O'Brien, dude right. chief, i think it's okay, chief so o'brien they, they which is really funny cops. since what's that they had two cops. They had two cops. And Commissioner Gordon wasn't really even like a, he's just like a dude in the desk. Like like you could have mistake taken him for mistaken him, excuse me, for for the mayor or something, the way they kind of like presented him. <laughs> yeah. But all right, but Bruce Wayne in Gotham is about ten years old, right? Yeah. Right. Let's say realistically he starts being Batman around twenty one. Okay. We'll we'll assume somewhere around there. We got ten years to play with. 
Um, <laughs> if that city existed for 10 more years, like it is now, it would be burned to the ground. A, they get burned to the ground in in a version of the... Didn't it get burned to the ground in a version of the... There was an earthquake. Oh, there was one where there was a uh, plague, and it got quarantined, and then there was an earth... Which was swiftly followed by an earthquake that shut the city down and cut it off from the outside. It did get quarantined in uh, Dark Knight, too. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. (laughs) Um, Yeah, yeah. Um, And, like... Are you... you you But you were saying off air that... Well, that's why Gordon is going to stop the corruptness. I'm like, if Gordon does that, there's no need for a Batman. We have seen, though, okay, besides two characters, three, possibly four characters with a moral compass that we have seen, I still believe they will show us more characters. No, there, there's only, like, two characters max, because I still don't consider little Bruce Wayne a character. Because no, I'm not considering scenes, him. His scenes seem so disjointed from the rest of the entire show that it's almost like, oh, we had to do these scenes because it's like we have to establish that Bruce Wayne is still alive. <laughs> his no, if it was honestly a show about just Gordon and like him fighting Black Mask and stuff like that, and just trying to trying to make Gotham a safer place and failing. That'd be okay, but that's not like I don't know why Bruce Wayne is even in this. I think I think the adaptation that we have of Bruce Wayne is good. I think this would be a kid who I mean, yes, they probably should have shown him more like broken, but in a in a weird way he is kind of broken. Mm-hmm. Like he's still trying you to see him he's it, burning it, himself. I love it's the long play on on on, on Bruce. Yeah. Well, why doesn't he go to school? Oh, dude, he's not. He doesn't go to school. Are you kidding me, it's Bruce Wayne? He's, he's rich. The, he's the he's the good guy equivalent. Like his family was like the glue that was keeping the city together. It was the good guy equivalent of but but of they were the crime bosses. The city was still corrupt. The police was still corrupt. We're probably gonna find out that someone in the police department organized the hit. Yeah, we probably will. But <laughs> it was probably the the one guy, the guy that kind of being the puppet. Anyway, uh, by the way, if I can uh, scale back, Chief O'Hara Chief was O'Hara. from Batman, not yes. Chief O'Brien. Chief O'Brien okay. is a guy from uh, Star Trek The Next Generation, <laughs> went over the Deep Space Nine. Sorry about that. How Sorry about rude. that. Thank you for the clarification. Sir. Yes, yes. Well, we don't want to get the angry tweets about that one. Uh, well, Mike is telling us to move along, so I think we should rediscuss this. Basically, you know, this will be a long Mad ongoing Mike. discussion. Yeah, I'm sure. because we have a full season now. So. <laughs> Whoop de do, Basil. Oh, so it can only... I'm still watching it, and I want it to get better. But at this point, like, uh, it, it's just it's rough. It's Basically, rough they watch. haven't done like example compared to the other show that my wife is kind of making me watch. Uh, How you get away with murder. I am very lost. That's like in, a horrible idea for yeah, a show. It's it's like so <laughs> forced drama. Like this act Gotham actually makes sense. Like I'm like intrigued on how this could possibly and, go. And I heard you say it's um it, it it's like law and order. Well, yeah, like, but, but, but Mad Mike had a good point. The law or it, order. <laughs> it, it's law and order and effed up Gotham, right? Um and, and it is, it is. Which is really funny since the guy from Law and Order popped up on Flash this week. And it's apparently a regular. So, anyways, oh my god, we have any stories, or we w- actually we should probably go into uh, what we watched. Oh, uh, what did I watch? I did watch. I don't. I don't remember the movie that it's called. Uh because it was the. Um, uh, I can't. I can't explain it. It's the guy from Scrubs. Zach Braff. Yes, Zach Braff. in his that movie that he did. That's the sequel to Garden State. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. <laughs> uh, this is this is us this- or. Yeah, something like that. It, to be honest, like all these people bit or not, all these people complained about. Oh my gosh, she's using Kickstarter, blah 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 blah, to make this. You know At why? Least it's not potato salad. This is why What's he it? used Kickstarter because the movie wasn't that great. Like it's good, but there's no way anybody in Hollywood. Wish I was here, right? Yes, it Which would I not was- have made back its money. Like. That's why he did it on Kickstarter. 
And for that reason, I said, yeah, it's okay. It's good. It's decent for what it is. That's basically all I watched. I'm going to see tomorrow. Um, I call it, I call it, what do I call it, Mike? It's furry. I call it furry, but it's furry. fury. Fury. I'm going the to go see movie. that, the tank movie. I'm pretty excited about that one. Uh, but yeah, that's really all. I I don't know what I've been watching. I know I finished some stuff on television, but again, I'm I'm so lost. I don't even know what I don't even know what I'm doing here. Where am I? <laughs> How did you get here? What is this place? What is this thing? Oh wow! What about you guys? What are you guys been watching? What you got, Mike? Oh, dog! <laughs> uh, I've been watching dogs. Um, okay. Um, I've been watching a little bit of BoJack Horseman. I'm I'm undecided as to how I feel about it, but I'm, nope. I'm halfway through. Um, it's really odd. It's a very odd show. It's not what I was expecting it to be. Uh, are you I mean, in that? Are you in the middle? Yeah, I'm. I think I just finished episode six. Yeah, it, it's With definitely. The big D. It's definitely getting better. What about you, Mike? Uh, well, no, I, I wasn't. I, I no, watched, Mike keeps watched, pointing at me. Weird stuff. I don't know if he's pointing at the dog. Oh my god! I, I watched like, Flash and Arrow the oh. new season third, and oh my god, they are really, 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 really good. Oh my gosh, Flash started. Yes, it's really fun. Are we? Is that episode one or are we? That's okay. episode one. I have to. On. I have to go watch that. Yes, Flash started. Uh, it's very good. Uh, Arrow season three started. Yeah, and it made me feel all of the feels. Uh, it was very good. I got to meet Stephen Amell actually at Comic Con. Uh, nice. He is. He's a very nice individual. And I saw Kevin Conroy, who is the one and true Batman. I oh, see now I'm, I'm still like I'm in that weird place where I should just binge watch Arrow. Yes, you should. Up. Why um, haven't you done this? Th- seasons one and two are on Netflix. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like binge I just watch it binge immediately watch it. because uh, a you can't really watch Flash without watching Arrow. Uh, you yeah, you kind of need to. What? Yeah. At least that second season. There. I was pretty excited to watch Arrow. Yeah. Or I mean, Flash. You should probably stick through on that Arrow. Because they're they're gonna cross over, like uh, episode eight, I think, of both shows. It's gonna be a two parter. Uh, yeah. fine. So Malengo, you better get on that binge watch. Fine. I guess I found my next. I still gotta finish True Detective, and I gotta no, finish watch else. Arrow first. Okay. All right. I have homework. Yeah. <sighs> Your homework is to watch entirely seasons one and two of Arrow by next week. Well, I already watched season one. Oh, okay. Well, so it's just season, season two. two. It just came out on Netflix. Season uh, two is infinitely better than season one. Yes, yes. You're going to have to slog through season one, but you need to to make sense of season two. Oh, I've already seen season one. Okay. So I just got to... It gets better. It gets better, man. Two. It gets way better. All right. I believe you guys. I choose to believe you. Mike, what are yes. you watching? Really quick. Um, you I have watched, a whole bunch of stuff to plug after this. So go. X-Men Days of Future Past just came in the mail today. We did a rewatch of that. Still, It's still amazing. Still good. Um, I get catch up Arrow, The Flash. I can't believe how many superhero shows I'm watching right now. It's ridiculous. Yeah, you're still my watching Wednesday Asia night. Still. My Wednesday night was like Shield, Arrow, Flash, Gotham. Wednesday night when I finally get the you catch watch up. those in the correct order, Sorg. Uh, of, I, you I, know, I, quality. I, I don't know if I watched it. In a, I, I actually got uh, Flash and I think Shield done in time, and I and I did go ahead and watch it live over the air for Arrow. Not nice. not nearly as annoying as that when I did that finale and they were plugging Edge of Tomorrow like over top of everything. Yeah, yeah. but still, can we just say it's stupid that they renamed that? What Edge of Tomorrow? They they uh they renamed it for the branding for the Blu-ray release. Really? Is live, die, repeat. Okay. That's that's Anyways, really I, but then that's that's basically it for me. All right. Well, plug your stuff. 
What, 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 what? Are you not plugging stuff? I'll like plug, stuff. plug Extra Life? Extra Life is happening. You can check it out. Hey, go over to uh, SorgatronMedia.com. There's a button over there for Extra Life helping sick kids. Uh, Children's Hospital in St. Vincent's in Erie, PA. Here up on uh, October 25th, we're going to do a 24-hour marathon. Video game marathon. Uh, myself and the insert coin to begin.com people. Uh, so go over there. Uh, click on the, the, the link over there on insert coin to begin.com or SorgatronMedia.com for that. Please don't Donate. It helps out the kids. It's for the kids, no, man. Sword. It's for the kids. Can they recommend any movie themed video games that you should play? Ooh. Well, like the, absolutely. If they give a donation, like, like uh, Batman Returns for the SNES. Um, I think I want to. Uh, I'm gonna have to work this out. But if you do a donation, if you have a request of, I want you to play X game, and I'll, I'll make sure to play it for like a half an hour, hour, whatever it is. Um, we'll do that. We'll fill the time with that. Sure. X- I mean, we did the same thing for Chachi Plays where you donate, get an hour uh, to play with somebody, but it'll be like, I want you to go through this. I mean, granted, it has to be something I own. I should donate and make you play the Charlie's Angels game for GameCube. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. Uh, where can you where can we find you, Mad Mike? Uh, you can find me on the Twitters at Mad Mike for eight, eight, three. And uh, you can find me also on the Wrestling Mayhem show later tonight, where I'll be talking wrestling. On this channel. Just stay on this channel. Just keep watching this. That's right. What about you, Sorg? Uh, At Sorgatron on Twitter, SorgatronMedia.com for everything else. Nice. And we do have a Facebook group, which you can definitely join, and where we like to post random movie stuff and comments. It's a great little community that we are starting there. Um, and you can find me on Twitter at Rambling Mango. And soon, someday in the near future, unless Terminator comes and destroys the world, we'll have a uh, a website, right, Mike? No, we have a website. It's oh, we up. Do? You can it's go. Up? Yeah, there's stuff there. Oh, there's stuff there. You can go to thatramblingreview.com Woo! and check out episodes of this. Uh, there's a review that went up. I need to fix it so it pops up to the top. But if you follow the Facebook, if you follow the Google Plus, it's linked there. Uh, our friend Alex Garzal in California. California is involved. Watched uh, one, of the, one of the one of the paranormal activities. So go check that out. Holy crap! We just went coast to coast. We did just go coast to coast. Fairy dust everywhere. What? Ah, just... And with that, have a rambling movie weekend. The end. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com.